All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today, uh, we're going to talk about topology optimization. Uh, we want to lightweight. We want to use topology optimization to do it. And we're going to be looking at this nice robotic arm. So our problem in our application today is we have this robotic arm. We're going to lightweight this part because it's giving us a little bit of trouble. It needs to have some reduced mass to get optimal performance out of our robot arm, robot arm here. And we're going to be specifically looking at one um, well, I'll call it one knob that we can now turn uh, to get the most optimal result possible. And let's take a, a look at, at the steps before we get there is I told, as I just said, we're going to lightweight this arm in our robot arm. So I isolate that guy and then I turn him into a mesh. We're going to use this mesh for our optimization process. I apply some force to these two faces up here. I apply a force and a moment. And on the back faces back here, I'm actually holding them fixed. So that's our that's our setup. Uh, nothing too special, nothing too crazy going on. Uh, what I want to take a look at is this new option we have here, boundary penalty. And let's get a little bit more information about that. So if I go into my information tab, I go into the description of it. Uh, what it says is a field to penalize material formation near the boundary of the design space. If zero, uh, no penalization is enforced on the boundary. If one, material will be completely restricted on the boundary where no loads or constraints have been applied. Uh, what this essentially means uh, is before this was named boundary penalty, it was called filter boundary. And the options was a drop down menu. It said Dirichlet or Newman. So zero when there is no penalization on the boundary is the Newman criteria. And one where it's completely penalized is the Dirichlet. So now we have the option to not just have zero or one, we can have any value in between. And as you can see with our little icon here, it's a field. So you can actually apply this at different locations, have different filter boundaries. So you have total control. What we wanna take a look at is how this changes our results and how we can get the most optimal geometry for our part. So what I did was I ran three separate topology optimizations. I ran one with a zero um, input for my filter boundary, uh, for my boundary penalty, sorry. I ran one at 0.5, and you can see how that changed a little bit there. We'll look at it in more detail here. And then I ran one with 1.0. So I ran a Newman, a Dirichlet, and somewhere in between. Uh, once I had these three, uh, I identified a threshold value that worked, and then I created three final implicit bodies. So this is my implicit body for a zero, a Newman answer. And what I then did was created the exact same, not the exact same, I did the exact same process to create a final part for 0.5 and 1. So let's take a look at this. This is my Newman answer. You can see it has a lot of material on my outer boundaries, as you would expect, when there's no penalization and it can put the material on those boundaries. If I go to 0.5, and I'm going to turn these on at the same time, this 0.5 is going to be blue. Now you can see where the material formation is a little bit different. There's less in some areas of our boundary. Now there's still a little bit on the boundary. That's because it can still have some there. Uh, there's different areas here. It's more on the interior section, which is what you would expect. And you can just see the difference. Um, and same thing here, I turned off my zero, we're just looking at 0 0.5, and now I'm going to turn on my 1.0, my Dirichlet answer, and it's going to be gray. So now we can see the difference between my 0.5 and my 1. If we uh, squirrel around, the material is more concentrated, even more concentrated on the inside instead of on that boundary. Now we have these three options. Uh, what, <laughs> what's the best one, right? How do we know which one we need? Well, uh, as standard practice, once you create a topology optimization, you run a verification analysis. And that's what I did down here. I ran a verification analysis for 0 0.5 and 1. And if we take a look at those, it's the standard I ran against the load cases, and we get our maximum value of stress. And down here on these key results, uh, what I actually did was grabbed a couple of things. Uh, I created a von Mises stress point map. And from there, I grabbed the maximum value of stress for each of them. Not only that, I have a mass properties from body. So what we're doing in this 
topology optimization is trying to get the lowest value of stress and the lowest weight possible. So if we look here, uh, our zero, our Newman answer has a maximum value of 4.74 approximately megapascals. And that's, that's shown right here. If we look more at the 0 0.5, we can see that has a 3.35 megapascal maximum stress value. So there's a difference there, right? So if we had selected Newman, that wasn't maybe the right answer. But now if we look at 1.0 or Dirichlet, we have a 3.49 maximum megapascals maximum stress value. So before where you would have been able to choose Newman, which is zero or Dirichlet, which is one, the best answer seems to be a combination of the two in this case. So now you can get that little bit extra optimization. And I mentioned before, uh, let's take a look at mass. So between these two, if I go into my properties, we have a mass of about 16.7 for our 0.5. And for 1.0, we have a mass of about 17.19. So this value here for 0 0.5 is stronger and lighter than that of the 1.0. Uh, for the 0, 0.0, it's actually uh, 0, 0.0 is lighter than the answer, but it has a much higher stress value. Well, not much higher, but a little bit higher. So then you can play this game. What's more important to me? Is this enough of a factor of safety? Can I take the, the uh, you know, more weight reduced or do I want the uh, stress to be lower and have a little bit extra mass? So this is another knob you can turn to get the most optimal geometry possible for your application. And what that would look like in the end is if we turn on one of these, one of these guys, and we'll turn on 0.5 here. We turn on the view bar assembly. In the end, you're going to end up with a nice optimized geometry to put into your part that we know is going to be the most optimal possible. Because now we have this really, really incredible capability to be able to change between our boundary penalty. Uh, before uh, I take any questions, I want to show you one thing. I actually went ahead and ran NTOP in a headless environment. And what I did was with a slightly different file, ran an iteration of the boundary penalty from zero to one and incremented by 0.1 and plotted it against the max stress. So this is something you could do to say, okay, I created this uh, optimization process, run it for all the iterations of this and let me zero in on where might be the best answer. So I can take a look and say, hey, zero for this one has a pretty good answer, but so does somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4. So now I'm gonna go take a look at these answers specifically and maybe make a couple tweaks and zero in on my final answer. Uh, so now you could kind of run a bit of uh, a DOE sort of uh, to really find your most optimal geometry even easier. Um, okay, with that, uh, I'm happy to take any questions you guys might have about this, about what I did. Of course, this file will be provided for you uh, on the website with this video. So please go feel free to check it out and, and um, pick through it to see what, what I did here. Uh, while I wait for, for any questions to come on in, you're, you're welcome to throw them in the Q&A section. Um, I just want to state uh, we have these NTOP Labs that come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we have some really, really awesome ones coming out for you. Uh, we also uh, do some virtual trainings every two weeks, so if you haven't been signing up for those, please keep an eye out. We, we love seeing you guys in there, so please join us there. And um, if this interests you, you know, uh, reach out to us. You know, let us know that this is something you'd like to, to know about. If you're already a customer, reach out and say, hey, can you teach me a little bit more about this? If this is something you're interested in, reach out to us and we'll, we'll be happy to give you a demo. I had a question come in and it uh, asks me to explain the algorithm for how it works from between for uh, zero and one. And I'll go back there. Um, for you, let me just get back to my nice geometry here. Open up a topology optimization and let's take a look inside of here. Get my information. So boundary penalty. So if my answer or if my input here is zero, 
there's no penalization enforced on the boundary. Uh, and that only makes sense in the context of if my answer is one. So if I make my boundary penalty one, uh, the first thing that it does is say no material is allowed to form on the boundary of my part. And what I mean by that is in, if we go here, my initial part looks like this. And the first thing that's gonna happen is anywhere on the boundary. So the top layer of elements are going to be immediately taken away and they're not allowed, what well, you can think of it as not allowed to form uh, as part of the answer. It takes away material from that boundary of our part that those surface layer elements. So when I scroll through my answer here, you can see it's taking material away from the boundary as much as it possibly can. Uh, and that's what that's doing. So if I go back to my zero, it's very happy to allow it to use those top layer of elements on our boundary anywhere it can. Uh, there's no restriction on it. And it's two different methods for the optimization process. And now we have the ability to ramp in between there if we want. Um, hopefully that answered your question. It's a pretty interesting capability here. And I, I think it's going to open up some really awesome possibilities for you guys. All right, another question came in. Uh, it's a slightly unrelated question, that's totally fine. How did I get such smooth uh, stress results? Well, realistically, uh, to get the smooth stress results, that's mostly up to the geometry of the part. And let me go back to my verification analysis. Um, we have these nice new color maps, which we can take a look here, turbo. I could switch it to magma, which is pretty interesting or, or uh, <laughs> various, uh, but turbo is the one that makes the most sense where the lowest values are these really dark violets and the, the highest values of stress are these really bright reds. Um, so it's given that smooth transition to more accurately depict the transition of stress in the part. Uh, but we also don't have terribly concentrated stress anywhere in this part. And that's why the transition is nice and smooth. I did a few smoothened bodies that helps out um, and a couple other things, but in general, there's no hard corners. I mean, there's a couple here, but they do have uh, a rounded edge there. There's no super hard corners to concentrate our stress. And that's mostly uh, the result of that. Uh, to do my meshing, uh, to answer that process, let me open up my mesh for you here. I started with a voxel grid. So I'm gonna isolate this for you. I started off by doing a voxel grid from implicit body, which gives me this really really fine mesh and captures my um, geometry really, really well. But it's uh, a hex mesh. So I actually switch it here to a um, triangular mesh with a remesh surface. And I allowed it to locally refine kind of where I expected those values to, to kind of rise. So on these corners here, you can see how much smaller my triangles uh, got. And this isn't the world's best mesh. Um, but by allowing it to do that, it gets you the more accurate answer at those corners instead of just having a huge spike there, which can be a product of meshing sometimes. All right. Um, if there's any other questions, please ask them. Uh, I'm just gonna reiterate that this boundary penalty that we have now uh, allows you to get an answer that you can't get uh, anywhere else. You can choose between and have a have a hybrid filter boundary now. So it's not just Newman or Dirichlet. It could be somewhere in between, which really unlocks this really uh, powerful capability that I think you guys are really going to be able to take and run with. It's going to get you the most optimal geometry for your part, the lightest weight and the strongest. Uh, and it's just giving you even more freedom to create these really incredible geometries. All right. Well, it looks like questions have stopped coming in. Thank you guys for joining. 
Again, please join us on Wednesday and Friday for our next NTOP lives and every other week in the future. And um, talk to you guys soon.